God has plans to prosper you, give you hope and a future too. So let me remind you of what you have the power to do. You can win, live your dreams, reach your goals. You're listening to the Cassandra Mack Podcast, where we maximize success and de-stress from the mess through a biblical lens. Make sure to stay to the end. I have a special prayer that I'm going to pray just for you. When you get a moment, stop by our website, CassandraMackMinistries.com. Check out our books, our merch, and our inspirational music designed to inspire us all to live the blessed life. So happy birthday to you if you have a January birthday. If this is your birthday month, what are you doing? How are you celebrating? Shout out to those of you listening from all around the world. What country, uh, what city, what state, where are you tuning in from? Today's podcast is being sponsored by my 2024 goal setting journal and success planner titled See It, Speak It, Write It, Do It, I would encourage you to get it because it provides a centralized space for you to write your goals, your plans, your dreams, your big ideas, even the small ideas that you want to grow into big ideas. You have a a centralized space to do that. And what is different about this planner and success journal is that there are also Bible scriptures that focus on success, greatness, prosperity, so that you can get yourself in a spiritual space of locking into scriptures that will empower you for your success journey in 2024. On today's episode, we are continuing our four-part series on four powerful questions to ask yourself so that you can reinvent yourself in 2024. Today, we are closing out the series. We are on part four. Just as a quick recap, Question one was, what do you want to achieve this year? Question two was, how have I evolved as a person? So you're asking yourself that question. The third question that you're asking yourself, are there any mindsets, attitudes, behaviors, or habits that could potentially hinder your goals and your progress? If you miss parts one, two, and three, please make sure to go back and listen to them so that you have not only the questions, but the tactic uh, attached to the question. So today is all about our relationships. There is no way that you can level up your life in whatever area you were trying to level up your life without taking a hard look at the people whom you spend the most time with. My grandmother used to say that the people that you spend time with do one of three things. They either lift you up bring you down or keep you where you are. And you got to be clear about who the people are who bring you down because you want to create some boundaries, some distance there. And you also want to be clear about the people who uplift you because you want to strengthen those relationships and fortify those bonds. And so the question is, who do you need to come out from among in 2024 so that you are connecting with the right people. So I want to give you a scripture and then I'm going to have you do a little quick activity to help you begin to clarify who you need to be uh, connecting to on a deeper level and who you may want to be putting some distance there. So 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17 says, wherefore, come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing and I will receive you. And so 
Who is it that you need to come out from among? Not just come out from among, but you need to actually be separate from them. You need to separate yourself. And here's the thing. When we come out from among certain individuals who we have deemed are not uh, are not good for our mental health, are not uh, in alignment with where we're trying to take our lives, it's important to understand that you can walk in love even when you have to come out from among someone, that we don't have to be nasty when we come out from among someone. We don't have to have these long, drawn-out conflicts. We don't have to have shouting matches. We don't have to give the other person a laundry list of all of their faults and everything that we believe is wrong with them because none of us are perfect, not one of us, including me. We all fall short of the glory. We all have things that we're working on. We all have battles that we're facing. But you get to decide who you want to do life with. That is up to you. You get to decide. Now, I want to be clear that I'm talking about adults uh, in this podcast, right? So who do you need to come out from among? So an easy way to do that is to think about the people who you spend the most time with and organize your relationships into three categories. We're going to use my grandmother's saying for the categories. So either you're going to take out a sheet of paper and you are going to write the heading, who do I need to come out from among? If you are working from the See It, Speak It, Write It, Do It 2024 planner, you can use one of the uh, planning pages in that planner so that everything is in one centralized space. So you're going to take your paper and you're going to divide it into three categories. Who lifts you up? Who brings you down? Who keeps you where you are? Those are your three categories. You can shorten it and you can call it lifters, draggers, and keep you where you are. So that's your choice. So let's start with the first category. Who are the people who lift you up? Now, a lifter does not necessarily mean that they agree with everything you're doing. When a person truly cares about you and They care about your well-being when they see that you are off track, when they see that you are not holding yourself accountable to the goals, the dreams, and the things that you say that you want to do. They'll call you out on it, but they'll do it in love. They'll do it privately between the two of you in a private conversation. When they see that you are doing things that create harm or havoc in your life, they're going to tell you about that because they're concerned about you. Now, they're not going to go talking behind your back, broadcasting your business but they will have that conversation with you. So lifters are people who support you. They're people who encourage you. They're also people though who will let you know when you need to step it up and when you are getting off track. Those are your lifters. They actually lift you up. So who are the people that you know that go into that category? And if that category is blank, meaning you're like, I don't have any lifters, you can always come back to that category and we'll talk about uh, how to do that in a moment. Now we're going to go to drag you down. Who are the people that drag you down? They always have something negative to say about you, about your goals, your dreams, the things that you're working on, the progress that you're trying to make. They uh, are not trustworthy. These are the people that gossip. These are the people that are competitive in an unhealthy way where they try to sabotage what it is you're trying to do, be, and have. These are the people that you find that you actually feel drained when you talk to them. You feel drained after after spending time with them. So who are the people that go into the category that they actually bring your energy down? They bring your focus down. They bring your level of peace down. They bring your level of joy down. And be brutally honest because you may find that some people that are going to go in this category are some of the people whom you've known the longest. It could be childhood friends. It could be people you went to high school and college with. It could be family members. Be very honest. So you're going to put whoever you need to put in that category without holding back. Then the third category are the people who keep you where you are. So they're not necessarily doing anything to encourage you, to support you, to lift you, but they're not dragging you down either. They just, they're just there. They keep you where you are. And so most of the people we know will probably be in that category. And those are your acquaintances. Those are the people who you are acquainted to, acquainted with, I should say. So now let's go back to that category 
of uh, the people who lift you up, particularly if you are an individual who's saying, I don't have anyone to lift me up. So if you are in a situation where you don't have anyone to lift you up, then in that category, what can you do to lift yourself up? What are some things that you can do to keep yourself level-headed, to keep your head in a good space, to keep your head in a positive, productive, and fruitful space, particularly relative to the things that you want to do, be, and have in this season of your life? See, like attracts life, right? Like. And as you become more intentional about being a lifter in your own life, you will eventually attract other lifters, even if you have a season where you are alone, what I call a season of solitude, where God is pouring into you, where God is growing you and molding you. And sometimes that happens on your level up journey. There will be a long season of solitude because God is refining you, building some character traits within you. And so begin to think about how you can lift yourself, how you can be the lifter in the lives of other people without burning yourself out. And what will happen in due time, in due time, you will connect with other people who are going in the same direction. And it is important to understand that everybody you connect with for the purpose of positivity is not necessarily going to be your BFF, your best friend. Some people will come in your life, uh, particularly for a season. And so think about when you are uh, taking a class and you meet other classmates and you're helping each other study. You are talking about the curriculum. You are talking about best practices. And in that season of your life, they're exactly what you need to do well in that class. You may develop a strong friendship that continues beyond the class, but you may not but they are what you need in that season. So I want to be clear so that you don't put undue pressure on yourself or other people that every positive productive relationship is going to be forever and ever BFF. May not be, but they will be what you need at the time and you will also be what they need at the time as iron sharpens iron. So these are your iron sharpeners. And so it may start by just God is sharpening you and eventually the sharper you become, you are going to attract, you are going to attract that, uh, that, that aligns with you. And so that's what you can do if that category was blank in terms of people who lift you. Think about some ways that you can begin to lift yourself to be a more positive person, a more focused person in the direction of your goals. And now let's go back to that category of uh, people who keep you where you are. So those relationships can go either way. Sometimes you'll have a person who is a keep you where you are person and they can grow into a supporter. Sometimes a person needs to see you doing something awesome for them to catch the wind of the inspiration to say, wow, how do you do that? I would like to do that. Or how can I help? I want to be part of what you're doing. And then you will also have people in that category who may seek to drag you down. And so as you begin to move forward in your life, there will be some people in the keep you where you are category that may move into the bring you down category or the lift you up category. So do know that relationships can change depending on where we are. And the keep you are category, again, you need people like that. So these may be your neighbors. Your neighbors are not your best friend. They uh, may not support that, what it is that you're doing, but this may be the person that will look out for you and say, hey, I saw somebody near your house when you were on vacation and you know, I asked them who they were just to kind of make sure everything was good. Or uh, I have uh, some extra tomatoes, <laughs> whatever the thing may be that you're being neighborly. And so you're, you're not necessarily, you know, BFF supporting each other in the things that you're doing, but you're being compassionate and humane. We need people, right? No man is an island, just being humane uh, to one another. So it serves a purpose. And there are some people in uh, your life where you keep them where they are, meaning you're not invested in what it is they're doing, but when you see them, you're polite, you're pleasant, you're cordial. So that's fine. So this will help you begin to determine who you need to come out from among. And remember, it doesn't have to be a nasty thing. The simplest way to come out from among people who you are no longer aligned with is to be so focused on your primary priorities and your goals that you are less available. It doesn't even merit a conversation sometimes. 
in most cases, especially if you think that the person is going to evade uh, accountability or play the victim, it may not be worth it for you to have a conversation with someone who's only going to lie and deny. And so what you can do in those cases you become so focused on your primary priorities, your major goals, your purpose, where it is you're going in whatever area of your life, be it your mental well-being, your emotional healing, your health and fitness, your finances, business, ministry, family, whatever the area is, you insert it. You will have less time to be talking on the phone to the people that drag you down, to be visiting with the people who drag you down, to hang out and accept invitations from the people who are dragging you down because the time you would be spending uh, hanging out with them, you are now going to put towards your goals and your dreams, whatever they are. So you will just be less available and it will naturally fizzle out. And if a conversation needs to be had, be prayerful, go to God in prayer. The Holy Spirit will be your mouthpiece when you don't know what to say. So go to God in prayer so that God can order your steps relative to coming out from among that person. And when you can't come out from among a person physically, right? So this could be a roommate who is uh, dragging you down. They're very negative. Then you have to do it mentally, emotionally, and spiritually by guarding your heart. You're not discussing what's near and dear to your heart. And so I hope that you found this series helpful. And these are some ways that you can begin to reinvent yourself. Because remember, when you are reinventing yourself, you were doing it from the inside out. So often we focus on the outside in, but it's really the inner work. When you do the inner work of reinventing yourself, and that includes your relationships, your mindset, your attitude, your goals, your dreams, the other things will fall into place. So if you want to dive deeper into these type of topics, into topics about personal growth through a biblical lens, mental health through a biblical lens, emotional healing, I would really encourage you strongly to invest in yourself by becoming a member of the Cassandra Mack YouTube channel at the second tier or higher. When you're a member at the second tier or higher, you get access to our wellness club. We have a Wednesday wellness club. It meets twice a month on Wednesdays and we focus on mental well-being through a biblical lens. We even have homework and the homework is self-care a personal growth homework designed for us to not just be hearers of the word, but to actually apply it to our well-being. Not only are you talking to me live because it is a conference call, you're also talking and connecting with like-minded people who are about their growth, unlocking their gifts, their greatness. They ain't got time for no drama. They're on the path to positivity. And so you're connecting with like-minded people. Are you connecting with perfect people? No, because none of us are perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But you're connecting with like-minded people who are going in the direction of their success, however they define their success. So that's one benefit. You also get access to premium content and exclusive classes that are not available to the public. You get access to vintage videos, which are my older videos that are not available to the public. They are in the vintage uh, vault now. And you get access to that. You get access to the church by phone replays. Now, live church by phone service is always free, always available to the public. And that is free, no charge. But sometimes when you leave the service, you want to replay what you've learned so that you can figure out how to go beyond the Sunday sermon and practice it in your daily life. And so that's where the replays come in. Again, there's no way that you can have success in any area of your life without an investment of time and resources. So with that being said, for those who are serious about their success and ready to make the investment, again, become a member at the second tier or higher so that you get access uh, to these things that will enrich your life. I would also encourage you to pick up a copy of my book, Unleash Your Unstoppable. That is a book that bridges the gap between scripture and practical application relative to your success journey to transform your life for victorious living. And last but not least, you can also pick up my EP, which is a collection. It's a short album of six uh, tracks. They are 
Bible verse songs. So I took certain Bible verses and turned them into songs for your relaxation, your biblical meditation, your devotional time with the Lord. The uh, compilation is called a sip of scripture because that's exactly what it is. It's a sip. Like when you take a sip of coffee or tea or lemonade. So the premise is to focus on one scripture at a time. So the song just deal each song focuses on one scripture. So that scripture can get in your spirit. So you can meditate on that scripture. There are people who are giving us feedback that they go to sleep to the EP and they let the EP play on repeat while they are sleeping. That's very powerful because if you struggle with insomnia, if you have bad dreams at night, by you allowing the Bible verse songs to play on repeat, it is soaking into your subconscious mind, filling you up with the word of the Lord. And the reason why music is so powerful, right, is because when we are listening to music, particularly inspirational, uplifting music, not only can we worship the Lord through music, but music can help to shift our our mood, our mindset, our attitude. It can put us in a better emotional place. And I'm talking about uplifting, encouraging music. Can put us in a better emotional place. It can help to relieve stress, calm us down after a rough day. So these are all of the medicinal benefits of music, particularly inspirational music. Not only that, when you are trying to commit scripture to memory so that you can inscribe it in your heart, one of the best ways to memorize something is through song. This is why when children are learning their ABCs, they learn it through a song. A, B, C, D, they're learning it through a song because it is the repetition and the melody that activates memory retention. So I would also encourage you again to get a sip of scripture. So let's make sure we pray. We don't want to leave without praying. Dear Father God, in the name of Jesus, show us who we need to come out from among so that we can move forward in purpose and destiny with renewed faith and fortitude. Show us, Father God, who we need to separate ourselves from and show us how to do it, how to do it without resentment, how to do it without bitterness, how to do it while still being forgiving, how to do it while focusing on the things that you would have us focus on in this season of our lives. Show us who we need to get connected to, who are the positive people that we need to be connected to, who are godly people that can give us godly counsel and help us to grow in the fruit of the spirit so that we can be more like you. We seal this prayer in the mighty one and only name of Jesus. Amen. Have a blessed day. Be a blessing wherever you go. You got this. You have the power to reinvent yourself. You have four powerful questions that you can spend some time really thinking through until the answers come to you that will set you on the path to reinvent yourself and your life in 2024. God bless. Romans 10 verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God.